Penn State has made the trip for its conference opener with its leading scorer, Lamar Stevens, to take on the Maryland Terrapins. And Bruno Fernando, one of the top rebounders and scorers in all of the conference. The teams collide for the first of two meetings here at Xfinity Center to get it rolling. Basketball on the Big Ten Network brought to you by Chief. Our matchup tonight is the Penn State Nittany Lions coming off of that big win earlier this week against Virginia Tech. Against the Maryland Terrapins, 5-1 on their home floor at Xfinity Center. And we flash it back to Tuesday in the big win in the ACC Big Ten Challenge for Penn State. They took out number 13 Virginia Tech, 63-62. Shot 44% on the game. A strong finish for the Nittany Lions, and they win it at home against the ranked opponent to get their fourth win of the season. Intercepted pass late, and they celebrate the victory. All right, time for our Jeep starting lineups. Tom Wormy along with Dan Bonner, and we give you those starting lineups. The visiting Nittany Lions, it is Lamar Stevens, second in the conference in scoring for Stevens. In fact, he's up to 23 points per game. Across the way, Bruno Fernando, the sophomore, an intimidating force inside, averages almost 16 points per game and almost 10 rebounds per game, fourth best in the Big Ten Conference. Pat Chambers is the head coach of the Nittany Lions. He's in his eighth season, 117 victories on the bench for the Nittany Lions, 10th overall. And across the way, it is Mark Turgeon, the head coach of the Maryland Terrapins. And for Coach Turgeon, his eighth year, 163 wins for the Terps, but over 400 for his career. His 21st year as a head coach in the collegiate ranks. Again, Tom Wormy along with Dan Bonner. We're just about set to tip it off and get the season rolling in conference play for both of these teams, Dan. Tom, I think turnovers are going to be a big key in this game. I think Maryland's got to force some to be able to get out and play in transition so they don't have to go against the set Penn State defense every time. Ball knocked around and taken by the Terps. So they will have the first possession with their 6-1 and one record. Lost on Wednesday in the ACC Big Ten Challenge to number four Virginia, 76-71, but came back in to make that one interesting after trailing by 20 in the second half. Penn State starts in the man-to-man -man defense, and I think that is a big shot for Jalen Smith. Very talented young player, did not have the best game against Virginia, so I think it's important that he started her up. And Smith played 27 minutes against the Cavs, just six points and five rebounds. Hera had it knocked away by Fernando. Maryland running with Cowan Jr. <laughs> if Fernando's around, you better go strong to the basket. Fernando now with 18 blocks on the season to lead the team, but that one turned back to Penn State. Wheeler does a great job defending the ball. He's one heck of a defender, and there's an illegal screen by Dredd. Lamar Stevens, you mentioned he's one of the leading scorers in the conference, but he's got his hand full tonight because Jalen Smith has got a couple inches on him, and all Smith does is catch the ball, turn, face the basket, and Stevens playing him for the drive. Smith is able to get it up for the score. Smith the, fre Smith, the freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, averages just over 12 points per game. In fact, that game against Virginia was the first game this season he did not get to double digits in scoring for Smith. Shot clock is at 10 for the Terps. From the free throw line, and it's good. Morcell with a basket for Maryland with a 4-0 lead. Penn State, one of the top defensive teams in the Big Ten, and that was a pretty good defensive series for Penn State. Just better offense. Nice play by Morcell. He averages in double-digit scoring 10.7 points per game. For Daryl Morrisell, the sophomore also from Baltimore, Maryland, at Mount St. Joseph High School. It's a long range three, and it's good for Penn State. They're on the board with Josh Reeves and a three. They do not shoot a high percentage to the Nittany Lions from beyond the three-point arc, but they get 35% of their offense from behind the arc. One of the big keys in their win against Virginia Tech was that they made nine threes. Just 32% from beyond the arc on the season for Penn State. And the drive at Bucket Anthony Cowan Jr. for the Terps. And Cowan does that as well as anybody in the Big Ten. You just have you've got to try to keep him in front of you because if he gets by, he can get all the way to the basket and score. 
Maryland now three for three from the floor. Another three-point attempt, and that one off the edge of the rim from Stevens. I think if you're Maryland, you're fine with Lamar Stevens shooting threes. Allen Jr. at 15 points in the win. The loss, rather, against Virginia. Back and down is Smith. Basket and foul. We have seen Maryland go to Smith against Stevens one-on-one -on -one close to the basket twice now. The first time Smith hit the jump shot. This time, what a great job by Smith to maintain his balance, get himself organized, and get it up over Lamar Stevens. First personal foul on Lamar Stevens. You know, Patrick Chambers was upset that there was a foul called there, and I think the only real argument that he had is it looked like the first bounce before Smith went into the shooting motion was the foul, but it doesn't really make any difference as he does not convert the three-point play opportunity. Yeah, just 61% from the line for Jalen Smith. An 8-3 early lead for the Turks. Penn State's got to get the ball going from side to side and then give Lamar Stevens an opportunity to drive the ball to the basket against Smith. Stevens trying to work it inside. Shot clock winding down. Difficult fall away. Morcell. Trying to get Bruno Fernando in the mix. Foul prior to the shot attempt. Hera trying to guard Fernando away from the basket. And one of the things about Bruno Fernando is he's so good around the goal, but he is very quick and he can handle the ball a little bit. So if he has an isolation, as he just did over there, he's all by himself on the side. And Hera just can't stay with him, can't move his feet fast enough. So you see number 24 for Penn State is coming in like Watkins. Hey. Along with Trent Patrick. Patrick wears number 35. Swatted out of bounds, but it will stay at this end of the floor for the Turks. It's Watkins who squatted it, and Mike Watkins missed, uh, in fact, missed the entire season. His first game was the Virginia Tech game with some struggling with some uh, mental health issues. But when he's in the game, he is a heck of a shot blocker, too. Fernando, shot clock winding down. Like Watkins altered that shot attempt out of bounds. It will be. Penn State basketball. Good effort on the defensive end by the Nittany Lions. That is some matchup. Watkins against Fernando on both ends of the court. We we're talking about Mike Watkins. Dan gave all the credit in the world to his university, his coaching staff for supporting him, and especially his teammates. And now he's back into the fold for Penn State. Maryland has done a great job preventing dribble penetration so far by Penn State. They just haven't gotten any good looks at the basket. Five on the shot clock. Smith recovered for the block. Reset on the shot clock. That missed attempt by Buttrick. Now Buttrick can shoot that three. Cowan Jr. wanted to set up Smith. It got deflected away. Nittany Lions in transition. Miscommunication. Smith grabs it. Fernando caused that whole thing. <laughs> Reeves was worried about where Fernando was and missed the opportunity. That was Wheeler who stole it away and then a foul against the Terps. So Coach Chambers' team trailing 8-3 on the Big Ten Network. Back inside Xfinity Center on the Big Ten Network. These two teams split their meetings a season ago. Right now it is the Terps with an 8-3 early advantage against the visiting Nittany Lions. It is so great to have you with us. Courtside along with Dan Bonner. I'm Tom Wormy. And Dan, so far Penn State difficult shooting night. Just one of seven. The Terps cranking up the D. I think the credit for the, the fact that Penn State is only one for seven has to go to the Maryland defense. They have done a great job keeping Penn State from getting to the basket. And anytime the Nittany Lions do get close, well, Jalen Smith and Bruno Fernando have been there to solve that problem. And that one made basket against Coach Turgeon's D is a three-pointer for Penn State. They are last of the conference in three-point shooting. Stevens has been held out of the box score so far, 0 for 3. Another long-range miss and a long rebound to Cowan Jr. One of the keys for Penn State is they have to get easier shot opportunities. Again, the Maryland defense very effective so far. Wiggins. Oh, 
Entry pass to Fernando. There is a foul. That looked like it was the defending from Watkins, and he has picked up his first. Fernando did a great job that time establishing offensive position, and Watkins just couldn't get around him before the pass got there. The key is Fernando got the ball the moment that he was open. Great job getting the ball to Fernando and forcing that foul. Fernando, who shoots a ridiculous 77% from the floor, albeit most of the time from close range. <laughs> Ayala with a little fall away. Ayala, one of those guys who had a really good game against the Virginia Cavaliers in the tough Maryland loss the other day. Made three three-point baskets in that game for Ayala. That shot was altered as well, goes out of bounds on the baseline, but will stay with Maryland. Excuse me, Penn State. And Ayala, he just does a great job with the ball. With the dribble, drives the defender back, and then the little step-back jump shot. That is not an easy shot, but Ayala made it look easy. The Lions are now one of nine, and they've missed their last six shot attempts. Stevens, no breathing room against Smith. Driving right down the lane. Fernando was there to greet Reeves. Bounce from the baseline. And Mark Turgeon is arguing that when Reeves tried to save the ball in bounds, he threw it off the back of the backboard. Reeves is going to go for the ball here, try to save it in bounds. And it did look like it did hit something. But Reeves, who is a tremendous driver, he got by his defender, but he had to put the ball over both Smith and Fernando, and that's just nothing happening there. Another miss for the Nittany Lions by Myron Jones. And another save by Reeves. Mark Turgeon a little frustrated with his guys at the moment that they can't get these defensive rebounds. Patrick Chambers would, you know, it's fine. His team's getting shots, but he'd prefer they make some of them. Not the way Penn State wanted to start. One for 11. But they just haven't had good shot opportunities. Watkins on the block. Fernando digging in. Jamari Wheeler, number five, just came into the ball game for Penn State. Stevens baseline, halfway down and out. And that's his shot. I think that... Mark Turgeon would be happy if he shoots threes. Patrick Chambers would be happy if he shoots that one. He'll make more of those than a miss. This is Wiggins. He's getting out of control for Penn State now. All right, now let's take a look at this message from Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire, and the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Are hiring delays causing work to pile up? That's not smart. Then there's smart. ZipRecruiter finds people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. So you get qualified candidates fast. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. ZipRecruiter, the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Big Ten. Here at Xfinity Center, the Terps are on an 8-0 run and have built a 12-3 lead, just over 13 minutes to go in the first half. We talked earlier about Bruno Fernando, who you see in the center bottom of your screen, establishing offensive position. Here he establishes defensive position. Now, technically, he's got that forearm on Mike Watkins while Watkins has the ball, and that's supposed to be a foul. Indy Lions scoreless for the last five minutes, and a foul was called in the process. That'll be Morcel and his second. That's a tough play for Morcel to defend the lob pass to Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Excuse me, Lamar Stevens. That's just too. That's just tough for Morcel. Stevens has him by about five or six inches. So Morcel with his two personal fouls to that bench for the Turks. Stevens trying to get some sort of offensive traction for Penn State. They kick it out for the three, and it's all net. Josh Reeves knocking it down. 
Now Reeves is a guy who can make three point shots on a team that shoots the ball very poorly from three. He shoots almost 40% coming in. So that's the only two baskets. He's had wide open threes. Fernando got double teamed down there in the paint. They're going to call the middle of the ball. And the arrow favors Penn State. This is really a good play by Harry. He just gets his hand in there and gets it right on top of the ball. And he was sort of behind him, and most of the time you'll see that called a foul, but you can see from that replay, he did not make any contact with the body. He got his hand in there clearly on top of the ball. Let's see if Penn State can convert and climb back into this. Well, six of their points on three-pointers by Josh Reeves, who shoots 38% from beyond the arc this season for the Nittany Lions. He's out of Oak Hill Academy. That's a twist wow. three, and he knocked it down, Dan. He's got three of them. And now the, the other two, he made were wide open ones. That time he had pretty good defensive coverage against him, but he still made it. He's now three for four from beyond the arc, and those nine points, all of the production so far for Penn State. That's the double team, but a potential foul on the Nittany Lions. And that's what Larry Serrato is telling Penn State. A three-pointer, his third of the game, knocking it down is Josh Reeves. Basketball on BTN is presented by Jeep. Hurry in for great deals at the Jeep Big Finish Sales Event. And by State Farm, here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. Grab some popcorn, a drink, and stay with us here on BTN for the Terps and the Nittany Lions. The early season Big Ten conference play. 20-game conference schedule this season. Some pretty good games in the conference last night as they kicked off play. There's a three-second violation. One of the things that you saw from the Penn State Nittany Lions in their win against Virginia Tech was some really good defense that kept a team that drives the ball very well out of the lane and that's what the Nittany Lions are looking to do here today is to keep Maryland out of the lane force them into perimeter jump shots Michigan and Indiana have posted victories today in Big Ten conference play and Lamar Stevens is a hand uh, Lamar Stevens is a handful to try to guard without some help First on Lindo. Even Bender into the lineup for Maryland. The Lions are four and two. Zero and one away from State College. Stevens in a congested area gets it to fall. And the foul chance at the three-point play for Lamar Stevens. When Stevens gets the ball that close to the basket, he is very tough. He just has great patience, a great job using his pivot foot. That's just, that's hard to guard. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why he's one of the leading scorers in the Big Ten. He can score in traffic. 23 points per game. Leads him in scoring and rebounding. 83% from the line, so that miss is a rarity. It is a rarity, and he, and he does a great job getting to the line. His 47th attempted free throw of the year. Wiggins let the defender go on by. Whistle underneath. No. Smith is on the court. I think he got tied up maybe with Hera on the inside. Larry Serrano is joined by Courtney Green and Lewis Garrison, our officials for this evening. On the left side of your screen, Heron number 21 in blue trying to block out, and that's that's okay, but he, he first of all, he pushes him, and then he knocks him down. And the officials are going to go look to see if that was a flagrant one foul. Which would be excessive and or unnecessary in nature. And one of the things they're looking for is the elbow to the head or neck area. And it did appear as if Hera threw an elbow in there. I, I, right in the center of your screen, Hera trying to get in block out position. It's hard to see what happens there. Boy, he and, and Smith are really battling on the inside, and he does get the arm around there. I, I don't think that's anything.
and that's what the officials they looked at it to see whether it was a flagrant one foul either because of the elbow or the officials are really big this year the NCAA on hook and hold and then he didn't hook him didn't hold him he just pushed him that's the 16 foul against Penn State Error to the bench for the Nittany Lions Gotten back into this game. They went on an 8-0 run after Maryland had gone on an 8-0 run of its own to build a sizable lead. Inside of 11 minutes to go in our first half, Tom Wormy, Dan Bonner, our outstanding Big Ten Network production crew with you from College Park, Maryland. Penn State really working to keep Cowan out of the lane. And that's a great job right there. Stevens moving his feet, forcing Cowan out of the middle of the lane over to the side. Where Wheeler is waiting for him, or Weaver, excuse me. Wheeler is waiting for him. That's just a great job getting in position. And Wheeler is such a quick defender, and he seems to have great defensive instincts. We talked about his ability on the ball. That's off the ball, just getting in position to draw the charge. But Stevens is the guy who made that play by forcing Cowan wide. Three turnovers in the last couple of minutes for the Terps. And there's a turnover by Penn State. Watkins just simply couldn't handle the pass. Jamari Wheeler now going out of the game. So they assessed Wheeler with a personal foul, his first. Now in the game, Bolton made a couple of, of threes. Three of them, as a matter of fact, in the Virginia Tech one. So he's a guy who can shoot the ball. He's not shy about doing it. Sixth straight home game tonight for the Terps as Wiggins goes up and under and can't spit it off the square for two. Here's Reeves. Three three-pointers to his credit. Tries to go high to Watkins. Here comes Ayala. Working into the corner, and Smith misses a three. Angular rebound. Penn State could have the numerical advantage. The two-on-one, and the dunk from Josh Reeves. Now, Jalen Smith is a guy who probably, before he ends his college career, is going to be able to shoot that three effectively, but I think at this stage of his career, Penn State is happy with him shooting the ball out there. Reeves is in the double figures now with 11. 10-0 run for Penn State. 11 of the 13 points so far in the first half belong to Reeves. Maryland needs to find Fernando. Ayala could not collaborate with Smith. Intercepted by Reeves. And the flow of this game has been seized by the Nittany Lions recently then. After an atrocious start. In and out for Stevens. Real activity going on between Stevens and Smith. That is a long range three and good. Aaron Wiggins. He made a couple of big threes against Virginia. He's got a nice quick release. Maryland staying in the man to man. Five points now for Wiggins. That includes a made three point basket. Ten on the shot clock. Reeves flashes and scores. This is a great job by Reeves making a tough catch in traffic and then maintaining his balance and powering the ball up to the goal. That's a really good play. Reeves now with 13 points. It's above his season average of almost 11. Smith had it knocked away by Watkins. And Watkins, as we said, one of the best shot blockers in the Big Ten. This is Bolton, who's into the game for Penn State. Where's number 13? Stevens. He's got to get out of the lane. Weak side. Fights for it. One by Stevens. Bounces it off of Smith. And it's Penn State basketball. Boy, this is just great hustle. And Reeves is a guy who's gotten it going for Penn State. Gets the dunk. He's got 13 points. And here he is with a great catch inside. Josh Reeves has accounted for 13 of the 15 points for the Nittany Lions so far, who are currently on a 12-3 run to tie this game at 15, Dan. 
Wow, 13, that's 87% of the points. He's taken 50% of the shots. <laughs> but he's, he has made three three-point baskets. He has been very effective in transition. He's caught the ball inside. He's done just about everything that Penn State has needed him to do. Here you see him run in transition. And then his other basket was he made a nice catch in traffic. And they, they can't leave him out very long. He's been the entire offense. Way above his season average of 10.8 per 10.8 points per game. As Steven misses the turnaround. Fernando had the rebound. Watkins reaches in and picks up. I actually think they called the foul on Bolton. They did. First on Bolton. And that'll send Maryland to the line as they're now in the bonus. So Stevens is now just one of seven for Penn State and Fernando at the free throw line for the Terps. 61% of the season for the free throw line for Fernando. Tomorrow, the top ranked Nittany Lion wrestling team squares up with the 13th ranked Lehigh Big Ten Wrestling, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern on BTN. One of the reasons that Penn State has been able to get back in the game, Tom, is they've forced turnovers. Maryland with five turnovers in the last five minutes as Fernando makes the second one. And in that same period of time, Maryland only has one field goal. When you have five times as many turnovers as field goals, that is not generally a good method. They have taken the lead, though, on the Fernando free throws. The pull-up is good for Penn State. And it's Bolton. Tied up once again. Fernando, by the way, coming off the double-double against Virginia. 14 points, 11 boards, his third double-double of the season after just two a year ago. Ayala was attacking the rim, and a foul is called. One of the problems that you have when you press, if you don't get a turnover, you can create an advantage situation for your opponent. That's exactly what happens, and you don't need a layup. Bolton does a nice job as the defense drops to the two guys who are underneath the basket. He's open at the free throw line, and he cashes in. Second foul on Watkins. Puts Ayala at the free throw line. 73% on the season. 11 of 15 from the stripe on the year for Ayala, the freshman from Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> That's a big play because Watkins, you see, going to the bench. I think Penn State's defense really picked up when Watkins came in, and now he's got to go out because he's got the two fouls. I think now would be a good time for Maryland to try to get Fernando re-involved in the offense. One of two for Ayala. Fernando has only attempted one field goal so far in this game. Terps by one. Three-pointer off the side of the rim on the attempt by Bolton. And it will be Maryland basketball. Seven minutes even to go in the first half. Mark Turgeon's team built a 12-3 lead right out of the gate. Penn State responded to come back to tie it up at 15. And it's a one-point lead for the number 24 team in the country, the Maryland Terrapins. Trying to get it to Fernando. Able to recover. Whips it into the corner. Cowan Jr. And fight for the rebound tip, but there is a foul against the Turks. Nice blocking out that time by Penn State. As Stevens and Buttrick in there. And Fernando goes over the back. This really good battle on the boards, but Smith and Fernando both there, but I think they call it on Fernando going over the back of Lamar Stevens. Sixth team foul. And the fans not happy about that one. Stevens has struggled so far. Out of the credit belongs with the Maryland defending against Penn State's top scorer and second best in the Big Ten. Shot clock is at six for Stevens. Backs it up and knocks it down. That's, I think, where he's most effective, Tom. That mid range game. Inside of oh, 18 or so feet, he is really effective. Fernando, I thought, did everything he could possibly do, but Stevens is just too good an offensive player. Four points now for Stevens. 
Pass in tight quarters, taken away from Fernando. Reeves against two defenders, and he spins it in. What a first half for that young man. And Mark Turgeon better be careful. He thought Fernando was fouled, and he's raising such cane about it, and he might get a technical. Just two points so far in the first half for Fernando. And the guy that punched that ball out of there is Wheeler. And we've talked about Wheeler and his defense throughout this first half. And this is just a nice job by Stevens recognizing that these, it's at basically a two on three. Wheeler knocks the ball out of there. Fernando's unhappy. It's a two on three because Ayala gets back in the picture. And Reeves is able to finish against two guys. We've seen him now finish twice in traffic. He is having himself a career here in the first half. 15 points for Reeves. And one third of the Penn State points have been scored as a result of Maryland turnovers. And the Terps on the season really haven't taken very good care of the basketball. Coming into this game, they had 17 more turnovers than their opponents. And that trend has continued today. Reeves, the senior from Fairfax, Virginia. As his Nicky lines ahead of the Turks, although this ball will go against Penn State and Wheeler. Second personal on Wheeler. So Watkins with two personal fouls, Wheeler with two personal fouls. Some of the key guys for Patrick Chambers having some foul problems. And a double bonus now for the Turks, Ayala at the free throw line. Was there just a moment ago, made one of two. Tomorrow night, the U.S. Cellular tip-off week continues with a doubleheader. Conference play continues. Illinois and Nebraska square off, then Minnesota goes to Ohio State. That's all tomorrow night. Two other games in the conference today. Indiana with a win at home against Northwestern. Michigan a win against Purdue. So far toward in the last few minutes of this first half, the Maryland offense has been driving the ball to the basket. Their success, and they've only got 19 points. There's 5:30 left in the first half. You have to say the success has been limited. Stevens on the drive. Stevens calculates the angle. He gave that pump fake from beyond three, and Smith actually went for the pump fake, and that enabled Stevens to drive by. Again, if Stevens is going to shoot the ball from out there, I think Smith has to play off and let him do it. Stevens just got his fourth rebound. He's got six points. Trying to add to the total, and he'll bend the rim. Again, he did the same thing. He's out beyond the three-point line. He fakes. Smith goes for the fake, and he drives right past him. You cannot go for that fake if he's beyond the three-point line. This is Smith with position. Stevens got back there defensively. Buck trick to the deck. Picked up. Smith had it for a moment. Oh, what a play by Smith! They work it around the three-point arc and will slow it down, but they don't have much time. Just six on the shot clock. Wiggins short, follows his shot. How about a third attempt? It's an offensive foul. That was Bolton who absorbed the contact on the drive. Bolton is standing there waiting for him, although he was very close to that restricted area. But Stevens, he just takes the ball, he gets, gives the fake, and goes to the basket. And that's how he's going. Look at Smith's reaction. Smith reacts toward that shot fake. If he's going to shoot a jump shot from out there, you just have to let him go. Eight points for Stevens, an 8-1 run for the Nittany Lions. It's going to stay that way for the moment as Fernando clears. One thing about the Nittany Lions, they may not shoot a high percentage from beyond the three-point arc, but they're going to keep shooting them. So Penn State has built a six-point lead, just under four minutes to go from Xfinity Center in the first half. Penn State is on an 8-1 run and leads 25-19 against the Terps. You're watching tip-off week presented by U.S. Cellular. The action continues through Thursday here on BTN. Saw the Turgenites. They're watching Penn State fight right back into this game and maintain a six-point lead, although they 
have worked on their routine for quite some time, it appears, Dan. Uh, they have, and it doesn't appear to be getting any better. <laughs> it's the effort that counts, Dan Bonner. And the thought around the holiday season, I might add. Bruno Fernando's at the free throw line, 61% of the season. The sophomore Dan goes 6'10 and 240, so Patrick Chambers will have no problem picking out number 23. He is entertaining to watch, very expressive. Expressive, explosive. Yes, uh, and all the <laughs> X words. And really seems to enjoy himself out there. And the main thing, for him, one of the reasons he's improved so much this year, he's been able to stay in the game. He's been able to stay out of foul trouble. A product of the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. And from Angola in Africa. Bruno Fernando, number 23 in white. Penn State with the basketball at 3.45 to go in our first half. Stevens slamming again. Double-fisted rim rocker for Lamar Stevens. And Mark Turgeon can't believe it. That's the third time in a row that Stevens has pump fake from beyond the three-point arc, and his opponents have gone for it, and that's enabled him to drive by. Stevens now with double digits, and he's hit his last four shots. He has done a nice job taking what the defense has given him. How about this guy as well? Reeves holding the finish for an extra second. He's got 17 points now. <laughs> But if Reeves had the element of surprise, he's lost it here. They're going to make some adjustments for him in the second half. It is a 12-3 Penn State run. 29-21. Nittany Lions and a whistle. And once again, as Stevens catches the ball, he sees this little thing. Fernando goes flying past him. And then Reeves, who has been so effective, again, gives a little fake. And you understand why people go for his fake beyond the arc. He's been so good out there. But he just steps underneath, takes one dribble, and knocks it down. Fernando is back at the free throw line. Fernando's got a nice stroke. I, he ought to be better than 61% from the line. And it would really help Maryland's cause if he could be. Because he's going to go to the line an awful lot. Now six points for Fernando. And all from the free throw line. Six for six. Coming up at the half. We'll send it back to Rick Pizzo and Sean Morris for the State Farm Halftime Report. It's been a frustrating last few minutes of the first half for Maryland, but with a good close here, they can reassert control of this game. They started out playing very well defensively. They've got to get back to that. This is Stevens. Took that escape dribble, but couldn't convert. Ayala. Long distance. Creates a potential run out for the Nittany Lions. Stevens flicks it to the corner. Offensive foul. Second on Stevens. So that's two on Stevens, as you mentioned. So this is just a play where Stevens needs to get stopped a little earlier. He knows where he wants to go with the ball. He should have made the pass just one dribble earlier. See, he never does stop. Ayala had the position, and it sends Stevens to the bench with his 10 points, 5 of 12 from the floor, 0 for 2 from long distance for Stevens. But he's come alive in the latter stages of the first half. Well, if you're Ayala, that's really the only way you can defend that play is to try to draw the charge. Nifty dribble from Cowan Jr. And the layup as he beats the defender to the rim. Now, this is what we're talking about. Can Maryland go on a little bit of a run here? Four points now for Cowan. Inside of two minutes to go in our first half. So glad that you're with us for the conference opener for both of these programs. Patrick. Smith. His nickname is Sticks, and he went high to get that rebound. Patrick is actually a very good three-point shooter, but he's missed both of his open opportunities here today. This is Cowan. Drew some defensive attention. Wiggins. Smith was fouled. Unselfish player from Wiggins to find the cutting. Smith moving well without the basketball. Well, that's really good movement, both with movement of the basketball and movement of players without the basketball. 
And that's what you have to do. The ball has to move. Maryland, as we mentioned, they got a little stagnant when what they were trying to do was simply drive the ball to the basket, but now they're getting movement from side to side. That makes the drive that much more effective. Buttrick just picked up his second personal foul. Hera comes back in for Penn State. Buttrick to the bench. 8 of 12 as a team from the line for the Terps in this first half. 1 of 2 for Smith. He's got a couple of double-doubles this season as well. Had one in his Maryland debut, November 6th against Delaware and also against Mount St. Mary's. Whistle on the drive attempt by Miles Dredd. Basket will not count. Nice looking shot by Dredd. <laughs> so Smith picks up his second personal. Dredd, another one of these young players in the game. Penn State's got a group of them. Maryland's got a group of them. So a lot of young guys on the court playing pretty well. Just the sixth free throw attempt of the season for Dredd, who commits the personal foul. Tom, this is what we're talking about. You can see Bolton, Dredd, and Jones, three really good freshmen for Penn State, and then Smith, Wiggins, and Ayala have been very productive so far for Maryland this year. So here in a key early season Big Ten game, you've got at least six freshmen who are expected to be key contributors. Dredd picked up that last personal hit second. Ayala's at the free throw line. And I think that was a personal foul that just was a combination of circumstance and frustration. The ball came right back to Ayala, right in front of Dredd. And he reached from behind and tried to grab it because I think he was a little irritated he missed the free throw. Ayala made his seventh start in tonight's game. 13 points against Virginia in 35 minutes. And he's hit double figures three times so far this season. And now it's just a one-point game. Penn State and Maryland, a 7-0 run for the Terps. Stevens on the bench, you can really concentrate on Reeves if you're Maryland, and as a result, their defense has picked up. Final 48 seconds. Oh, Drive off the glass and score. It's Bolton. Bolton certainly is not afraid. He took that ball right at Fernando. Nice job to just float it up over the top. Era made the play defensively. Cowan recovers. Now Cowan sizing him up now. Cowan. Right down Broadway for the three, kept alive. Fernando had it knocked away by Reeves. He's going to be whistled for the foul. He's in dismay, but the personal will be against the leading scorer for Penn State tonight, and that's his second. The key to this was the switch. Harris got a switch out, and that leaves Fernando with a big size advantage on the inside. It's hard enough for Hera to contain him in there, but when Reeves, who's much smaller, has to try, Fernando gets the opportunity. And now seven of seven from the line as Stevens is going to come back in. With 27.1 seconds left on the clock, Miles Dredd to the bench for the Nittany Lions. And Patrick Chambers confident in the veteran Stevens that he's not going to pick up a foul here in the last 27 seconds. And how about that, Fernando? Only one field goal attempt that he's been able to get to the line and convert. Leads the conference in field goal percentage. Leads everybody tonight with free throws. Seven for seven, and now eight for eight. And those eight free throws, that's been a big factor in Maryland staying in this game. Still a one-point lead for Penn State. After the Turks led 12-3 from the get-go. Final 10 seconds. Shot clock is off. Bolton gave it up, Stevens. Nifty dribble. 
Didn't quite have control on the shot attempt. Bounces off, and that is going to end the first half. But Penn State, Dan, we wouldn't think it after watching the first few minutes of this game, but they've got the one-point lead at halftime. Really fast start by Maryland. Good close by Maryland, but it was Penn State in between, led by Reeves and Stevens. Patrick Chambers has to be pleased that his team is leading by one at halftime on the road. Okay, so we'll step aside from Xfinity Center, our State Farm halftime report from our Chicago studios next after the break. Back inside Xfinity Center, Penn State shot 42% of the first half, right on their season average, and they've got the one-point lead, Dan, 31-30. And you see Maryland there, 13 free throws. Tom, they only made eight field goals in the first half, and so it has been an oddly disjointed kind of game so far. Uh, and, you know, a lot of whistles in the game, a lot of fouls called in the game. It'll be very interesting to see if Maryland can get any offensive flow goal. How about Reeves and Stevens for Penn State <laughs> accounting for 27? points and this is after Penn State had trailed by as many as nine in the first half to Maryland. Penn State started very slowly and Reeves scored 13 of the first 15 points. He banged down three three-point shots. He played well in transition. He scored in traffic and then when Reeves stopped then Lamar Stevens took over. He did from pump fakes from outside. He drove by Smith a couple of times. Here's the second time. Takes the ball. Almost the same play he made against Fernando. So those two guys as you saw on the graphic a few seconds ago, had 27 of the 31 points. The only other guy for Penn State in the game who has scored is Bolton. They've only had three guys score. Bruno Fernando, one of the leading field goal percentage shooters in the country, the leader in the Big Ten and one of the leaders in the country, has only one field goal attempt, but he's eight for eight from the free throw line. Putting on a clinic at the line. We start the second half. Tom Warby, Dan Bonner, and our outstanding BTN production crew. It's to Fernando. Rim rocking. Well, you know they had to talk about that at halftime is we got to get the ball inside to Fernando, get him a couple of dunks. That is why he shoots 77% from the floor. High percentage variety. Now on the defending end. Terps have taken the lead back with one slam dunk from Fernando. Shot clock is inside of 10. Reeves on the drive, cups it off the glass. Hera. And that's a great job by Harry. You know, if Fernando's guarding you and somebody drives, Fernando's going to go and try to block the shot. The best thing to do is just follow Fernando, which is exactly what Harry did when the shot went up on the board and it wasn't blocked. He was able to get the rebound. And there's Smith. We talked in the first half that he can be a capable three-point shooter, but he has not shot the ball well so far this year. That time, a wide-open three is able to knock it down. Eight points now for Smith, his first main three of the evening. Leaves with the kick out. Stevens. Now that time Smith did not go for the ball fake. Follow-away is off the mark. That's correct. Smith played off of him and didn't go for the ball fake. Made him drive the ball to the basket and then defended him very effectively. Entry. Smith. Double team. Penn State is they've got to really dial, dial back their aggressiveness a little bit. They have six guys with two fouls and one guy with three fouls, so they're already in foul trouble. And a steal. Cowan, the layup. A great start in the second half for Maryland. Timeout, Penn State. Six-point lead for the Terps, thanks to a 9-2 run to start the second half for Maryland. Maryland scored eight baskets in the first half, and then they've scored four baskets here in the first two minutes of the second half, including a three-pointer by Jalen Smith. And it was steal by Colin Benstein. Maryland able to get out and run. That's really the first time they've had a great transition opportunity. You saw Smith with the three, powers his way to the basket for the two. And that's a great strategy by Maryland. Everybody from Penn State is in foul trouble, so just attack them. So Fernando's into double digits. Jalen Smith is also contributed 10 points 
to the effort. Stevens. Position for Ayala. Surveys the situation. The kick and the offensive foul. And that is the second time that Wheeler has gotten in the way of a driving Maryland player who tried to kick it to the perimeter. Wheeler just appears to have very good defensive instincts. He stands there and waits, and Ayala's got to recognize that and either veer off with the dribble or get a jump stop and pass the ball before he runs into that defender. But Wheeler, we've seen him do that a couple of times, as you mentioned. He's done a great job guarding the basketball. Nittany Lions coming off of that win against Virginia Tech. The ACC Big Ten Challenge at home on Tuesday. The league split the challenge, 7-7. An offensive foul at this end is that Reeves, once again in disbelief, and once again assess the personal, his third. And then three fouls on Reeves this early in the second half is really a concern for Patrick Chambers. But this is, this is Collins standing there waiting for him. So Reeves will stay in the lineup with those three personals. And once you leave your feet that close to the basket, Tom, I really think you need to shoot the ball. Cowan was able to call a timeout as he stumbled, but possessed the basketball. And so the Terps with the timeout, but the 39-33 lead. And the Indy Lions have some issues as far as fouls are concerned, Dan. There's a lot of players on our list. Well, Buttrick had those three fouls at halftime. Uh, in fact, the Nittany Lions had 16 fouls at halftime. And you can see Reeves, Stevens, Hera. They're all starters. Dread. All those people with two personal fouls. Watkins, who was a key guy coming off the bench, he had to go to the bench with seven and a half minutes left in the first half with two personal fouls. In fact, Penn State only attempted two free throws in the first half, missed them both. 13 of 17 from the line. Well, the free throw line is, is what kept Maryland in the game in the first half, outscoring Penn State, obviously, 13 to nothing from the line. Alley -oop, Fernando. Cowan trying to save it right to us. Your broadcast position at midcourt. Well, you missed it, Tom. Dan Bonner jumping out of the way of the oncoming basketball and players. It's all right, Dan. It's all good. It will be Penn State basketball. Keep in mind that Penn State started out in a 12-3 hole and were able to battle back. Short on the attempt by Jones. Well, that's a bad feeling when you're Jones. You drive into the lane, you think you're open, and you stand there. There's Bruno Fernando looking at you. And Bruno Fernando was not looking at the basketball, and he and Cowan cannot get on the same page. Fernando did not realize he was wide open. He thought Cowan was going to shoot the ball, and he was running to the basket to try to get the rebound. By the way, Myron Jones... And the win against Virginia Tech led the team, Dan, with a season-high 18 points, has not scored tonight. This guy has Stevens aggressively to the rack. Stevens not afraid to take it at Fernando. Well, now for Stevens, averages 23 per game. Five times this season, he's gone for 20 points or more. In fact, the 14 against Virginia Tech, the first time he didn't go for 20 or more. How about that move from Fernando? Nimble with the basketball. And once again, we see a big guy pump fake, draw the defender and drive right past him. 12 points for Bruno Fernando. Watkins, 10 on the shot clock. He takes a tumble. Fernando helped him with that tumble. Coach Chambers over to help him up. Second personal foul on Fernando, 41-35, Terps. Big 10 on the national scene, Dan Bonner. 
success in the Gavin games and the ACC Big Ten Challenge split at 7-7, including a win by Penn State at home against Virginia Tech. Well, it's, it's been a very good non-conference part of the schedule for Big Ten teams. You can see nine of them ranked in the top 50 of the new power ratings and all of the teams within the top 102. And so that's a very good position for the Big Ten teams to be in as we start conference play. And that NET, that's the NCAA evaluation tool that replaces the RPI. Big rebound from Fernando. Turks by six. They led by as many as nine in the first half before Penn State came back to take the halftime lead 31 30. That turnovers hurt Maryland in the first half. They turned it over here a couple times in the second, but they've been able to convert. Shot clock is at five. Now the recognition. Off the of Fernando screen. Watkins. Thought he knocked it away. Instead, he's assessed a foul, and that's his third. And you do not want to get your big guy committing his third personal foul that far from the basket. That's just a very poor decision by Watkins. You just cannot reach in on a guard like that. Fernando sets the screen, and Watkins just nails it. Watkins is claiming that... Cowan grabbed him and hooked him, but the officials didn't see it that way. Watkins to the bench, three personals, have not scored tonight. That is kicked by Reeves. And that kick will reset the shot clock to 20. By the way, Fernando, Dan, has Watkins goes, Watkins goes to the bench. Fernando has a double-double. He's got four for the season, had two all of last year, and now three in a row. 12 points, 10 rebounds for Bruno Fernando. Shoes tied or not. Well, as we mentioned, he has really improved his play this year. And one of the key factors for him is he has been able to stay out of foul trouble. Fernando, shimmy shake. Doesn't get the roll. Did everything but convert the basket in that instance. Board from Smith. You mentioned Jones, the open three point shooter, missed it. Cowan forced it to Fernando. Reeves in the passing lane. He lost the handle for a moment. Gives it off to Stevens for a one handed dunk. That was a nice job by Reeves had he tried to continue dribbling that ball. I think he was going to call for palming the ball, but instead he was able to pass it off. If you're going to pass it to somebody, Stevens is the guy. <laughs> Third dunk of the night for Stevens, and now has 14 points. So he and Reeves combining for 31 points. Jalen Smith trying to extend the range. The tip is up and good. Morsell. Well, the state in the man-to-man, -man, and their man-to-man -man defense has been pretty good so far tonight. Bolton. Wiggins was defending, and there's a foul on the play. This is just a great fast break. Penn State gets out, and again, Reeves does a nice job handling the ball. And that is a great dunk by Stevens, and then nobody blocks out Morsell. Yep. Morsell is a guy who's going to go to the basket. You've got to find him, block him out. Thursday, these Terrapins finish out early conference play when they take on Carson Edwards and the 19th-ranked Boilermakers. Big Ten basketball Thursday, 7 Eastern, right here on BTN. Although Purdue did run into Michigan today, the number 17 in the country, and they lost for the Boilers, 76-57. to 57. No one's got to go there, though, and I think that that's going to be a tough test for the Terps. That's a break for Penn State that Stevens didn't pick up his third personal foul. Well, he's been able to get the ball to the basket to Smith and to Fernando in the second half, something they weren't able to do in the first half. Yeah, they've combined for 24 points, 12 apiece, and now the Nittany Lions throw it out of bounds. As Dredd couldn't catch up with it. Well, particularly with Pat Chambers and his big guys in foul trouble. 
Going inside is a good idea by the Maryland Terrapins, and they have executed that very successfully here in the second half. Eighth turnover for Penn State. Maryland almost had its 15th turnover for 14. Fernando. Open is Smith. He'll jab it. You see a lot of teams double team a guy down in the post, but it's almost always when he's got his back to the basket. You can't go double team a guy like Fernando if he's standing there looking at the play and can find his teammate Smith wide open. Terps are 8 of 10 from the floor this half. We've got the lead with 12.25 to go. 47-39 and a foul at this end against Smith. Lamar Stevens is in the middle of the lane. He's at the, on the free throw line. Now he elects to come and double team here, but Bruno Fernando can see him coming. Nobody rotates down to pick up Smith. If you're going to double team a guy in the low post, the offensive player has to have his back to the basket. And the, one of the purposes of your double team is to prevent that offensive guy from turning and finding the open man. Just a bad defensive play by Penn State. 14 points for Smith leads the way for the Terps, although he leaves the game with three personal. Stevens fetched in, right into the roadblock. It's a floater along the baseline and good. Bolton. That's eight points now for Bolton. Penn State has had some struggles on the defensive end in this half, and they've got to tighten it up down here on this end if they expect to climb back into the game. Fernando. Try to go across the court. Reeves in the passing lane. Strong dribble and drive. Follow Hera. Again, Fernando did a great job running down the court to block the shot, but Hera ran down the court as well. That's what you want your big guy to do, just hustle and pick up that easy opportunity. And now the Terps lead is just four. Inside of 11 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Wiggins misfires. Here's Stevens. Stevens eyes for the rim, trying to shake the defender. Hera tipped that one up and in. And again, Fernando went to the ball, and Hera followed the play. That's, a, that's something you can do to shot blockers. A shot blocker, particularly a guy like Fernando, who's going to go after everything. You can get some offensive rebounding opportunities if you keep hustling. And now the lead is two. Ayala. Hera doing work on the defensive end as well against the quicker Ayala. Three-pointer. That's a great rebound by Stevens. Eight rebounds now for Stevens. Bolton stepping in to the three ball for Penn State. The closest guy on the court to him was Patrick Chambers. Penn State has now taken the lead. It's a 9-0 run for the Nittany Lions. And interestingly enough, it's a 9-0 run that's keyed by plays by John Hara, this time following the ball as Fernando gets the block, but Hara gets the rebound. Here, Hara just battles inside. And then the three-point shot. This is a long three. And Maryland now down one. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. A 9-0 run for the visiting Nittany Lions to take a 48-47 lead as Bolton made their fourth three of the game, but they had not connected Dan on a three for quite some time. The other three three-point baskets belong to Reeves. And they were early in the game. One of the problems that the Terps have had is turning the ball over. They've got 15 turnovers in the game. Penn State has scored 15 points as a result of those turnovers. And this game, as you mentioned, it's been sort of disjointed, but it has gone back and forth the entire evening. A lot of counter-punching in the form of runs by each team. There's more set. Who they got? If they got Reeves, that's four. No, they got both. Second on Bolton. That was a heck of a move by Morcel. That's a great spin into the lane. Sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. Made his seventh start of the season tonight against Penn State. A 61% shooter. Tuesday, these Nittany Lions, Dan, are back in action 
when they host the Hoosiers. And then seventh ranked Michigan goes to Northwestern in the nightcap. It's Tuesday here on BTN. And how impressive has Michigan been so far this year? Ask North Carolina about that. Ask Villanova. Ask a lot of people. <laughs> You'll get the same answer. John Beeline's team is very good after going all the way to the title game last year. title game of the Big Ten tournament. Reeves misses from the corner. Fernando the outlet Ayala. Wiggins in space and in rhythm. That time Penn State had a wide open three-point shot that they missed. The long rebound allowed Maryland to get out and run, and the Terps were able to find the open Wiggins in transition. That's the way the Terps want to play. At the other end, Bolton. About 13 points now for Bolton. Well, nine of those coming here in the second half. He's been a big reason for the Penn State's made to get back in the game. That's four fouls on Watkins. As Cowan, that's what Cowan we mentioned. He does so well, drives the ball to the basket. He can finish in traffic. And this is something that Penn State has been able to cut off for the most part, but just goes right by. And Watkins picks up the foul. And that's the drive to the basket. The other thing Maryland wants to do is play in transition. Wiggins with the great fake gets an open opportunity. Watkins is right on top of him, but the fake drives Watkins away. I said that was four fouls on Watkins. Is that four or three? That is correct, Dan. That's four, okay. So the foul trouble really pinched Penn State, I thought, toward the end of the first half. Now they got their big guy in foul trouble again. Cowan completes the old school three-point play. He now has nine points. He has gotten the double figures in every game and 54 times in his career. He's one away from that benchmark again tonight. Uh, he's he struggled a little bit in this game. He's got the five turnovers. Reeves an unsuccessful trip to the rim and now Cowan. His teammate is Wiggins. Ayala. Fernando would tell the shot clock. Trying to go to Smith. Tapped away by Reeves. Great hustle to try to save it. Out of bounds with four on the shot clock, Maryland basketball. That's great reaction by Reeves because I thought Maryland was going to get an open opportunity. They moved the ball very well. But that's great defensive reaction by Penn State. Maryland leads the overall series 13 to 9, although Penn State does claim one more victory in what may have been an exhibition game back in 1938. Shot clock went deep for Maryland. But if you win the game, it's not an exhibition. If you <laughs> lose, it is. Exactly. Teams also met exactly eight years ago on the ACC Big Ten Challenge. The game won by Maryland while it was a member of the ACC. All kinds of great history surrounding these two programs. The Terps who made 27 trips to the NCAA tournament. Last went in 2017. No postseason last year. Mark Turgeon took him back to the tournament in 2015, Dan. They hadn't been since 2010. The national title, of course, in 02. Big high rebound for Fernando, tapped away at a whistle. That was a long shot. So the foul against Penn State and Bolton. Two-point lead for Maryland. So, Dan, just a moment ago with the Terps up 52-50, Bolton had picked up his third personal. He has joined the scoring party in the second half for Penn State. But there was a little bit of conversation and then some contact with Ayala. I don't know that Ayala even saw him there. Bolton is walking really close to the huddle, and he's got his, he's got his head turned. 
And lots of times when you have your head turned and you're looking backwards and you're walking forward, you walk into things. But that's a, they Penn State cannot afford to have him on the bench very long because you're right, he has been the third guy on offense here, particularly in the second half. Now, Bolton is up to 13 points. He, Stevens, and Reeves. Three players with double figures for Penn State. 31-24 on the glass. The lead for Maryland. Inside block by Hera. I think they're called the foul on Wheeler. Hera, got, Hera had a nice clean block up top, but Wheeler was down below scrapping at the ball. This is a nice job by Smith to get open inside. And Wheeler went for the block, and Wiggins gets to go to the free throw line. So the fouls continue to pile up on Penn State. First trip to the line tonight for Aaron Wiggins and just his 14th attempted free throw on the season. Remember the Terps started the second half on a 9-2 run to take the lead. Penn State came back, and now Maryland, after the free throws, has a 54-50 lead against the Nittany Lions. Terps won the meeting between the teams at Xfinity Center last year. Nice job by Fernando to step into the passing lane. Maryland's defense reacting very well. Teams played here last year on January 2nd. And win 68-63 for the Terps. The shot clock now at 10. Reeves directs some traffic. Trying to work off of the screen. There the kick out. Stevens for three. The shot clock on his back, and he makes that three. We watched him this morning after the Penn State shoot around. He stayed long after the team left and did nothing but shoot threes, and that's his first one of the game today. He's one for four now. But if he's got a full shooting percentage from out there, it's not for lack of practice. That's great defense by Harold. Just outstanding. And on offense, Penn State does a pretty good job playing against the shot clock. Harrod doesn't panic and take a bad shot. He finds a wide open Stevens. And then on the defensive end, Harrod does a nice job moving his feet, staying in front of Fernando, and just creating a tough shot opportunity. Cowan steps back. Oh, my. His three off the mark, run down by Stevens. Straight away, Reeves for three. Smith had it for a moment, out of bounds. Turks basketball. Hera touched it. Boy, Penn State, that was a great opportunity for him. You know, you'd take that wide open three by Reeves every time down the court if you could get it. He just didn't make that one. Reeves, after making those three threes early in the game, has now missed his last couple three-point shots, his last four, I think. Fernando to the bench. 12 points for Bruno Fernando. Now had to take it out. More cell angling to the rim. That's a nice job being tough by Cowan. He got himself trapped inside, but was patient and tough, and Morcel bailed him out with a great cut. Six points now for Morcel. We cross the six-minute threshold. 56-53 Terps. Stevens. Morcel to the floor. Reeves ends up with it. Stevens trying to carve his way in a congested area. A whistle and a foul going against Penn State. And Daryl Morcell is going to do a nice job right here coming in from the left side of your screen. His teammate is in trouble, and Morcell doesn't just stand around. He gives the teammate an outlet and gets to the basket. The Penn State defense totally around Cowan, not able to recover in time to pick up the cutting Morcell. Nice job. It was Cowan who picked up the previous foul, so Penn State maintains possession with Stevens on the inbounds. to give it to Heron. That is some catch by Heron. I don't know how he was able to stay in bounds. Stevens had no other choice. Now he goes to the rim strong. Heron attack. Fernando was there. Smith was there. Cowan leads the break. On the wing, Ayala. Not enough room to launch the three. 
Patience from Cowan. Great opportunity by Penn State. They just couldn't convert that tip by Harrow, who's had a couple tonight. Wasn't able to get that one. This is a Yala, defender on his hip. Shot clock is at seven. Cowan. Got the defender in the air. Can't convert. Smith and Fernando converge on it. Fernando saves it. Yeah, but what that penetration into the lane does is draw the defense, and it allows you to get offensive rebounding opportunities because the defense is not in position to block out. Maryland has out-rebounded every single opponent this season. Now they oop. Taylor Smith. Marcel served it up. Nice job by Smith to find the open spot, and great job by Marcel to find the open man. Penn State needs a basket desperately. Stevens can't get it for the Nittany Lions. Really good defensive play by Fernando to make that a tough shot without fouling. In the four minute mark, second half. Turfs trailed by one at halftime. Up by five, shot clock running down on Fernando. Back it in on Hera. Too strong. Reeves took it away from Smith. It's a great rebound. And a really good defensive play by Hera to just hold his ground. Five boards for Reeves. Oh my. Dread with the three he'd like back. It looks like that ball just spun off the side of his hand. Penn State has missed their last six field goal attempts. Marcel. Knocked away. Taken away. Boy, another turnover. Dredd was able to knock that ball away from Marcel. But how about the Terps going high to Jalen Smith from Morsell? He brings them out of their seats at Xfinity. Rick, thank you. 58-53. The Terps have the lead. Time for our State Farm assist of the game. It's the alley oop jam. Morsell finding Smith. It's just great ball movement that creates the opportunity, and the Terrapins have shot almost 55% from the field here in the second half. And one of the reasons you shoot that kind of a percentage is because you get good shots and not much. You can't get a much better shot than that one. 16 points for Jalen Smith leading the way tonight for the Terps. Maryland has already scored 12 field goals in this half, shooting 54%. They only scored eight field goals, shot 38% in the first half. Penn State scoreless over the last four minutes and change. Stevens has missed four of his last five shots, and Reeves has missed his last five. It's not going to stop Stevens, though. He is determined. In the paint, well defended by Smith. Little bit of daylight, and that's all he needs. Or can he score in traffic or not? <laughs> that's really a heck of a play right there. He's got 19, Dan. He had just an awful start. He was one for seven, but never gave up. That's his attitude. Now, Penn State's got to dig in here on the defensive end. They've done a nice job forcing turnovers, and they like to get one here and get a fast break. Ayala was cut off by the defending of Hera. Shot clock at seven. Cowan backs it up and rips the ropes with a three. And that's what you want from your veteran players. He has struggled this entire game offensively. Has five turnovers, but when you need a big shot, he hits a three. That's a huge shot in this game. That may be a backbreaker for Penn State. His first three of the game and now 12 points for Cowan. Dread rattles it home. How about the resolve of the Nittany Lions? Every time it appears that the Terps have thrown a potential knockout punch, Penn State comes back. Well, these teams generally play very close games, and we're seeing it again here today. Now, if you're Penn State, you don't need to foul, but you've got to play really tough defense and make sure you get the rebound. Shot clock down to six. He's stolen away Reeves. 
Stevens maintains the pivot foot. Again, they've met six times as Big Ten opponents. All of those games decided by six points or less. Maryland with four wins in those six games. It's a tough shot, but a foul called as Bolton was making his move. And Yala picks up the foul. Been very impressed with Bolton's aggressiveness. We mentioned a couple times he is simply not afraid. And I think it might as the game goes down for Penn State as we go down the stretch here. If Penn State's going to win this game. They might need somebody other than Reeves and Stevens to do it. They need another offensive option. And in the second half, that has been Bolton. He's now got 10 points in the second half. So Bolton, 89%. And Jamari Wheeler is coming back in the game. He's going to come for Bolton if Bolton makes the free throw. And this is one of those you know, defense to offense moves. Four for four from the line for Bolton. Wheeler is just a guy who doesn't look for his offense. He's only attempted one shot in this game, but he's in for defensive purposes. He has drawn a couple of charges in the course of play. And I think as soon as Penn State gets the ball back, you'll see Patrick Chambers try to get Bolton back in the game. The final minute. Wiggins double teamed. Reeves was last to touch it for Penn State. And again, Maryland has had problems with turnovers throughout the game. They've got 17 in the game. And Penn State is still in a situation. They're only down two. You don't need to foul, but you need to play good defense. Try to force a contested shot and then get the rebound. They are celebrating 100 years of basketball here in College Park. Will they get to celebrate a win to open up Big Ten play against Penn State with the shot clock down to six for Cowan. Gets it back. Needs the launch. Cowan, you've got to be kidding. All net at least five feet behind the line. Timeout taken. That may have been from the G in Gary Williams' court with John Hara right in his face. Again, the shot clock's running down. Cowan has 11 in the second half. And literally, he's standing on the G in the Gary Williams' court with a 6'9 player standing right in his face, and he's able to knock it down. It may, has made two big threes down the stretch. And I'll tell you what, Tom, you don't need your big-time players to make every play, but you need them to make the big plays, and that is exactly what Anthony Cowan has done. Two of six from long distance, but he showed his heart and courage on that three as the shot clock was running down at least five or six feet behind the line from beyond 20 feet, nine inches away for Anthony Cowan who coming into the game, Dan, had struggled from beyond the arc just 28% this season. Again, you don't, he doesn't need to make every one. He just needs to make the big ones, and he's made two big ones here down the stretch for Merrill. So now if you're Penn State, the strategy here is you have to score quickly, and then if you don't get the steal, I think you have to foul immediately. You need to stretch the game out. You need to put Maryland on the line to see if they'll miss some free throws and give you a chance. Concern on the faces of the Nittany Lion fans. Drilling by five after leading by one at halftime. We talked an awful lot about the young players, the freshmen on each of these teams, but it's been the veterans who have carried the load. And Anthony Cowan, the most experienced of the Terrapins, has made a couple of huge shots. 15 points for Cowan. A couple of threes in the second half. Now, you don't need a three here. You just need something very fast. But Reeves wants one. Does not get it. Hera had it for a moment. Taken away by Ayala. And he is fouled. Well, you don't need a three, but you'll take an open three, and so that was not a bad shot by Penn State. Just Reeves, after making those three early, has not been able to buy one since then. 
There's nobody around, and it's a three off the dribble. He's very capable of making that shot, and then Hera, who's played so well on the inside today for Penn State, just simply can't track down the rebound. One and one for Ayala. Four for six from the line. So now, Maryland as a team, 17 of 23 from the free throw line. Points for Ayala. And now the lead is seven. 25 seconds to go. And now you probably need a three. Bolton chucks it. Smith tracked it down. Reeves fouled him. Down seven with only 20 seconds left in the game. You really have no choice. You gotta go down and you gotta fire up a three. <laughs> So Penn State, for the sixth time in the last eight years, on the road to open up Big Ten play. Their effort may come up just short, Dan, here at Xfinity Center, as the Terps and Smith are going back to the free throw line. One of three from the line in the game for Smith. 16 points, seven boards. Hera. Reeves has to hurry. Smith went up for the rebound on the miss by Buttrick. And that is going to do it. 66-59. The Terps are 7-1 and 6-1 and and at Xfinity Center this season. Our Duluth Trading Harness Working Player is Bruno Fernando. Three straight double-doubles, four on the season. Fernando, 12 points. Smith had 16 to lead the way. Cowan had 15 and a couple of critical three-pointers in the second half. That wraps it up from College Park and the win for the Terps, 66-59. For Dan Bonner, I'm Tom Wormy. We send it to Dean Linke and Audrey Flaw in Happy Valley for Penn State Volleyball.